So thanks again and welcome to another Friday's live masterclass session with myself, Stuart. Today was a suggestion, an email in from us on to talk through about on um, balconies and walkways. So we're going to focus on balconies and walkways today. And we've also got a couple more suggestions that was highlighted too as well of how to tie into the external wall if the, the roof extends past that wall. And we're going to show you some little step details as well, which all ties in with obviously walkways and balconies. At the end as well, we'll be giving you a chance to ask the question, so we will mute you throughout the demonstration. And if you've got any questions throughout, then pop it in the chat. Or we'll also give you the option at the end to just unmute yourself and fire any questions you've got. So I'll get straight into the demonstration. So obviously, I've laminated this area to time being, and I'll show you how to key in if you do get that point where you've got so far on your roof and then you want to continue on the following here, and I'll show you how to, to prep that. For the first time here, we're going to go through the little X details. We're going to talk about the trims. Now, in most cases, you're about them, you will have an access onto that balcony, and that will be by the way of a uh, doorway, by bolt, or whatever it may be. So we still need to get that little step detail. Up. So I'll show you the two different ways of getting that. And obviously, the minimum height you do require for that threshold is 75 mil. So we're slightly higher than what we've got here. But for that detail, 75 mil. Our internal and external AT195 trims work well for that type of detail. So I'll show you first of all how to form that step. Obviously the trim's come in three metre lengths, so we're just going to offer that trim in place. And where any other trims are, we need to make sure we overlap at least 50 mil from that other trim as well. And we're looking at 50 mil. Once your trim in place where it needs to be, using your tin steps or your grinders, we're going to just mark that overlap. And then I'll just cut it using the tin sticks. As you can see, really straightforward, dead easy to cut. If you want to use your grinders, you can do. Obviously, put that into place, and then we're also then going to make sure we trim up. So we're going to use the PU trim adhesive. If you want a trim adhesive, or whatever trim means trim, we need to put a nice bead of curing trim adhesive. So a nice continuous bead all the way through, and then we can press that trim in place where it needs to do. What you'll find with the internal and external with most of the trims is they are set slightly over 90 mil. And the reason is then we can really force that into that external wall, push it in and get a nice bump to that external pressure or whatever it may be. Using your clouts to secure it down to start from one end of your trim, usually where you've overlapped. And then we just clout nails to use the galvanized clouts Start one end, push the other chain off of that third point. That way then you go back to your middle. You say we've got in line in case you start to run out slightly. Basically, you want to go for roughly about 100, 150 mil if you can. The key is, as I say on all of it, is to keep that trim nice and flat. Any bumps and bumps, your internal trim done. Next trim is your external. Same again, set slightly over with that angle, then we can just up it up in place and then beat it through. Nice and straightforward. I already cut this to length as you can see. So same again, whatever trim meets trim, we're going to apply a nice beam trim adhesive. So full continuous beam. And also, what end of trim you're going to be using, because we do have a short side or a long side to any of the trims as well. So we are universal in which height build up we want to do, we do want to achieve. I'm going to run with the short side and I'll put a full continuous bead on that overlap, whatever that trim overlaps. You can do it this way or you can also put it on the trim itself there. I'll put it in place. Same again, press it and secure it with a trim adhesive. And then we can start to fix it down. It seems you will have maybe a sill or a lantern or a step going over the top of this. You don't necessarily have to bandage this further down the line, but we to overlap it then so you don't get any driving rain, you can seal up underneath then, you're guaranteed then there's going to be no issue with that pressure over the Same again, secure it down, four men, come in the middle and then run them clouds in. Nice and easy. That's a simple step detail, just using internals and external trims as well. I'll show you now with the D-trim, but I'll also show you the C2 
12 filling tube. And one of the suggestions we had was is how we finish this roof, and we always end up, if you put that H in on here, we'll always end up with that little detail there, which is hard to tie into that external brickwork. Now you can glass it, you can cut yourself a little bit of trim and scribe it in and a little bit of tack on that band and dress and matting it in if you want to, which works well. But we also do supply is a C2 fillet to wall trim. Now this trim is obviously designed for both A and B and also they will be cut down to size. So what that will do in effect is it will close off that area and it will give you that fully sealed in part at the end there. Now this can all be trimmed to suit whatever D trim you're going to use and also whatever size A and B trim as well. So I'm going to be using the A200 which is the standard. You just literally just give yourself a little mark so slightly under that. Just cut this to the side and trim it up. Trim up this head if you don't want it overlapping any further, and also you can cut that to suit whatever you see one under or your simulated lead flash covering is going to be on that. But that can be one as well, obviously, just a couple of beads of trim adhesive. Now, where it hits that external wall, we're going to put a nice continuous bead, so we're going to seal that in. We're going to put a bit along that front batten, and obviously, a little bit along that front wall as well. Offer it in place. So we're going to push it flush to that trim and then secure it down to the deck where it's in place. Nice and square. Now, same with any of the three foam collars, they are hand molded. Just a little rub up to the sandpaper, just give them a little scratch up before top crossing. That may then get a nice bond to that surface. And there's only a little plate of red on that surface. So moving on, we've got some of the so I'll show you going down from our internal and external trim. I'll show you how to do just a D trim, like so. Now obviously we're not scribing it, we're going to go flat up, up to that internal and external, which works really well on the balconies. But if you do want to tie in with an external wall with your fillet trim, we're just going to wrap it in place, and then where we get that trim edge, at that point there with that D, we're just going to scribe it in. So we're going to marry it to that point there, and then what we'll do is bandage over that joint. Off it in place, put it, mark it up, and then with your tins and your grinder, just going to put that in. Now we don't need to put any trim in here, one of the areas where we're going to be very trim to trim, so we've got that C2 corner, so we'll just put nice continuous beads along there. And then we'll just fit that in place, keeping it flush. Yeah, when you beat 260s, always the big side to the trim to the top and the short side to the bottom. That will give you a 150mm high build up as well on the recommended. But if you add in the professional 75mm internal and external, you can also cut these down to size as well. Then again, this is very lost in place, snap your corner, your joint, and then we're just going to pop. And then we can bandage over them joints further on. So, same again in the middle, pop it in and then put the fixings down, making sure that nice and it on. You've then got the option that you can either go over the top with it. An external, like we've done here, or you've also got your simulated lead flashing as well. If you're looking to do a chase out with lead flashing, you then got that detail and a little couple of blobs of trim adhesive. Chase out, and then we'll just seal that up over the top of the brickwork with a bit of lead in it. Everything just runs off then. No flashing required, that's the simulated lead, etc. So that's your trim done. So the next stage now is obviously preparation and bandage. Once you've prepped, then we're going to move on to the reinforced and also your bandage.
And I'll start with the money first. Obviously, we're going to bandage job any joints, into chins, any overlaps. So I like to have them there. We're going to put a little bit of bandage and so on. And we're going to make sure then it's sealed. Even though we put chin adhesive on, we're still going to seal it up so it gets a nice seamless finish with that. On that corner as well, so that little internal scrub, that little detail we've got there. And also, just up over that edge as well. I will put that air trim on, I didn't forget that. <laughs> Put the air trim on. Obviously, if you're using the C2 prong, you can use either a B or an air trim. We've got a double batten trim here, so we're going to use it as an air trim. Obviously, just full continuous bead, like so, and then over that joint. Always with your chill here. Offer it up. Put that into place when it's going. And then you can then fix that down as well. Give you 12 now. Just say we're going to start one in. Fix and force to the edge for the reason. We want to make sure we cover them fixings. We want to cover half on the trim, half on the deck as well. So it's important now. We're getting close to the edge. Make sure that trim is secured to that edge. Explain on the previous one is you can get that step up, especially on balconies or walkways where you want that water to disappear from the roof. What you've got is that little step detail, and you can actually scribe that in, put your pencil out, and then drop your electric blader in and take two minutes off the decking board to make sure that that sits nice and close as well. But it is only minimal if you do get the trim on top. Of course, we're putting a bigger, thicker heavy duty matting on as well. The same, and then get all your preparation. But we've got all the bandage work, and then we're also then going to go over any of the fixings that we put on. It's important you get all your preparation done before you mix any of the resin, just to save yourself time, save wasting any materials as well. So once I've got all my bandage cut to size, everything's ready to go. So just pop these in, and I'll just save them to one side. And then I can use them again. First thing then. Now with the heavy duty matting, obviously with balconies and walkways, it is advised to use the heavy duty matting. Now you'll see it's tagged on all the, the system, whether it's standard or heavy duty, and there's two different sizes we do for the heavy duty. So this is a 16.5, and that will give you a 25 square metre coverage. And we also have a 33 kilograms, which will give you 50 square meters coverage. Obviously, with the matting, it's a lot thicker and it will accept the foot traffic, the tables and chairs, etc. So, any balcony walkways, it is advised to use a 600 gram matting. Now, with the 600 gram matting, we will use extra resin as well, which we'll go through in a minute on the resin stage as well, which is two kilos. And we'll show you the little system and how you should be applying that following with the buckets as well. Now all the matting comes in the bag, so keep it in the bag, keep it dry, not any water, any moisture get on that matting, otherwise it can contaminate the binders, when you put your resin on the white spots, etc. So any off cuts, don't be tempted to throw them on the grass or whatever, try and keep it in the bag, keep it protected, put it back in your bag. Now you've got a straight edge and a fair edge, with any of the matting, I'll put some gloves on, you can get, you have got a little feather edge, as I say, a straight edge, on the matting, so you want to make sure whatever you've done, or whatever matting you're laying out, you want to overlap the feather edge over the straight edge, and that's just for a nice, neater, blended, more smoother finish, like so. So, obviously, just clear your matting out. So, start at the dip edge, whatever it needs to be. And what we've got there is that 50 mil overlap, and then we run the trim, we run the, the, the matting up to the trim, and then we'll just cut that to size. With your knife, just pull the cut in. We'll just cut that trim off its front edge. So that edge will go out on your trim, the dip edge. What we'll do with that straight edge then, it just gives you enough time to feather that edge in to get a nice, neater surface. Now you don't need to cut the matting, cut the trim, should I say, with the matting. Not unless, like, say, if you're using the D trim, then it potentially might be. So what we need to do is just cut that along that edge, like so, onto the trim. The only time you would ever 
maybe come up onto that trim on that D trim, is it? As you say, we're doing it with the balcony. So with the balcony, the these trims just using standard trims, you can mat him up that area, and that'll give it a bit more strength to stop any table chairs, legs damaging that little fillet team, little fillet uh, trim on that as well. Now we do also have heavy duty trims available. So wherever you stand, we do have heavy duty trims. In our product guide, you see a little red circle with HD. They're more robust, more heavy duty trims. Not that it's necessary, either, but for balconies and walkways, if it's tables and chairs, they might work to just use the heavy duty trims on that to add a little bit more. But with your matching, once you've got it all rolled out, roll it back up nice and tight, and then we're ready to, to start our bandage and preparation stage. First of all, I've only got my bandage cut and I'm going to go to my resin with my curing resin, curing bucket, and then I'll mix a small batch of resin. And I'll explain more on the bucket in a minute as well. But all we're going to do is a little bandage work. And I always say to everybody throughout the bandage time just to put a little bit in, check your temperature, roughly what you think it is out there, like your deck temperature. Which is what we're working on, really. Just pour yourself a kilo or so, a kilo and a half, depending on how much bandage work you've got. And then you've got your added addition chart as well. So just check the temperature around. You've got four columns you've got hot, warm, cool, and cold. And it's based on the amount you put into that temperature range. I'll go in with your safety dispenser. And we do summer hardener, winter hardener, and we also have extra slow as well for the variations in temperature. But we've got summer here today, and we're going to follow that summer guide, which is roughly about 18 degrees, maybe slightly less. So we're going to go on the second column here, which is saying 30 mil. Now, this is the time to just gauge your resin now at this stage to see what working time you're getting. You should be getting roughly about 30 to 40 minutes working time, and then a further 30 to 40 minutes curing time as well. But for this now, with it being your bandage work, it's a good trial run for yourselves. Obviously, give it a good stir up with your mixing stick, put your hand in, and give it a good stir, like so. So, I always just check the clock, check what time. If I'm happy with my working time and that 2% I'll put in, then I'll stick with that for the main body. I can adjust it to suit then, depending on how I get it, before I eat that main body in the room. So, give it a good stir like so. And then we're going to go over to do all the detail work. I'll start with my little bandage work. Just with your little bandage, which we already have done, just roll these out. We tend to just get an off cutter board. That way, then you're not slipping on any resin or causing any eye spots on your roof. We'll just lay them out onto your off cutter board, and then we'll just soak these up. You get plenty of resin on your roller, and just literally go and coat over the lot of these. The reason we wet these out on the board is what we don't want to be doing is slapping resin all down these, these shoes here and dripping all the way down to so just give them a good coat. Nice and even amount of resin. And then we'll go around and sit these where they need to go. Now the key with any of the detail work for matting is to give it time to soak in. So we'll just go around, dressing them areas in like so. So any of these little corners we've got. Any little details like so that we're just going to sit them in. I'm not dressing them in as yet I'm going to give it time to break the binder down break the matting down and then I can go back over then with my brush to tie it in you get plenty of resin on give it a good one to twice over and then we're just going to dress in that corner detail, like so. So I just put them where they're going and let them break the binder down in situ. Whilst we're doing that, I'll go around with me edge work. There is two here, one guy can follow the other guy and he can start dressing them in. But I will go around now and just get me the little bandage work on. And this is where we'll put it on the deck. So it is always resin, matte resin. Put plenty of resin on the deck, all them fixings. Like so, and then we can go back over with the bandage. Put them where they need to go. Now, the carpet going dry on dry, so we need to make sure 
I still wet out at least one side of that bandage as well. So make sure you do wet that out before you put any dry matting on top of anything. So make sure it's always resin, matte resin, and then you can follow suit. I saw going over all in 15. To give it another good coat of resin, you can see it's starting to, to break that binder down now. And then we'll go over like so. So when we use the 600 gram matting, we have got to use the 450 bandage as well. So we don't need to use any extra bandages. All that is to go over the fixing or any joints like so. Now we're going to address it into. We're just going to use your brush. So just use your 50 mil brush. And to start with the first one we did, all we're going to do is just dress that in. And as we dress it, we're going to push it and pull it. So we're going to sharpen it all, especially around where it joins and feathers in to that next one. You can see how easy it is now to, to shape and dress it. I can pull it and move it as it's giving it time to soak in and break that binder down. Now, whenever we use your brush, you don't need to use your paddle roll. That does exactly the same job. So once you've dabbed it in with your brush, you've got a bit of oil and fibre, you draw that resin through, then that job done on the bandage stage, like so. So just dress it in, get rid of any sharp edges, and then you put it on for the back of work. You can see how easy it is now to just shape, how easy it works in, and how easy you can just mould it to suit. And it's a lot quicker to be time to break itself down. Next on the deck, we're going to wet them out. I need to then go over with a small paddle roller. So this is a little small paddle roller. All you want to do is nice and controlled. You just work over them. You probably about it off an arm's length. Work it over, you get that squelching noise which you put them on. And then four or five passes down the line. That squelching noise should start to disappear like to that. That there is an indication that you've completely paralleled and you can see the difference there where you are and have parallel. It doesn't matter which way you go, you go short way, long way, whatever you want, it's a lot easier to go on that train and then get it fully consolidated. So four or five passes up there. And I'll just draw the red through. You're going to do any herbals to make the nice warm tight seal bandage area. So that's me the detail work done at this stage. Now, obviously, as I said, time you get it, what working time you're getting. And I've got plenty of working time without going out. But I will also show you as well, one of the questions you get asked is, especially with balconies and walkways, is balustrades. So you will have balustrades on here as well sometimes, or maybe you want to put some decking or tiles, etc., on that surface. Now, if you do obviously have pre-laminated this one for the reason, then I'm sure you're able to just put yourself any little blocks or anything on to that deck. So we tend to just laminate that area. And the reason we laminate that is obviously we'll just bed them on with just the PU, so just a couple of beads of PU, and we'll bed these little patches on. So if you put in a balustrade, depending on where the fixing points are, we'll bed them on with the PU, trim adhesive, put them in line where they're going, and either just with the bandage or a bit of real glass matting, we'll just cut yourself a few little pieces, like so, and we'll dress that in and around that. So any of the fixings we do, we're going to go straight through the main body. We're not going to go through the main body of the roof, we're not going to damage the integrity of the roof by doing any fixing points. Etc. So obviously just wet out a little bandage work. So all your little pieces you've done, and I'll just show you the one of them and just wet that out. So you get plenty of resin on. Like so, and it's still workable at this time, so that 2% is completely fine now, especially in this condition. And then we'll just soak these up like so. So we'll just put them where they're going, dress them in all that little column all that area, and then we'll use our brush in a minute and give it time to soak in. So we'll do that on board, and I'll just show this one off for a minute, I'll leave that one. Yeah. Now if you are putting timber burners on, obviously 
uh, laminate and top coat the roof itself. And then you can put your decking on some PU trim it needs to on there. And you can wear that to the top coat, space around 300, 400 centers, whatever you want, and then put your decking on that. The reason we put them pedestals on is if you, you fall, your roof is going this way to your gutter. You used to put them on, obviously, to interfere with the fall of the water. You've got to build up, damage that timber over time. So it's a lot easier then to pack them up, resin all the pattern up, we can bed them on too. And so you can fix them to them little pads as well, same as you can with your handrails or balustrade. So that's the way you're doing it with your, with your balconies if you're doing decking on there as well. So with your brush, whatever he's done. So with my brush now, give it time to soak in, a little bit of resin on your brush, and then we're just going to dress them in, work them in. You can see how easy that is now. Now once this is fully cured, you've got a nice waterproof little piece of timber there you can work on, and obviously you can fix it to it, like so. It does take a little bit of time, what I will say is, and you've probably seen on this, is try and round your edges off with your a little bit of sandpaper or a little plain or router where the bull nose them off if you want. That way then you can shape it around them corners a lot better. Like so, you get a nice neat finish on. Obviously it's sealed up, the timber's not going to rot and you're also not going to pierce to damage the main roof as well. Does that make sense, yeah? Straightforward enough? And I'll leave that for the time being. So obviously, onto your main roof, and I'm mixing all the bats now. I'm totally through the bucket with the matting, which we've had pre rolled out. And I'll get me little rollers on my poles. And... So obviously, two kilos of resin per square meter. And what you'll find on all mixing buckets is there's the top coat column, 450 gram, and the 600 gram is on the bucket as well. So you've got all the workings out for you for the heavy duty matting as well. And also the hard resistance you have to see. So we're looking at two kilos of resin per square meter. Obviously, pour your resin into your bucket, looking over that 600 gram, and I've got just slightly over one square meter. Every one of them columns, every one of them boxes, there is one square meter, two square meter, three square meter, all works in square meters for you. All the workings out done. But one of them little boxes there is two kilos of resin. So I've got slightly over two kilos of resin. Turn it around to me out of the distance chart. Now I was happy with me 2%. I've got plenty of working time with that, so I'm going to stick with that. And that's selling the need 60 mil of our 60 mil in. Like so. Follow the bucket to suit. And then we're going to then mix it up. Obviously, if you're doing a larger run, then you can control that by how much mixes you want to do in a couple of small mixes or do four to five meters in one inch as well. But maybe just come back on your hand a little bit. What you don't want to do is get so far and start to gel on you and you're wasting materials. So just take your time, try and mix it in smaller bags, especially in warmer conditions. And then we'll work through. So once you've got your resin in your bucket, and you walk onto your roof. Now I've already laminated one side. So obviously, if you do need to, to come back the following day, if you've already laminated it like we've done here, then you need to bend on, especially if you've left it over a couple of days, with the larger roof or weather gets in the way, whatever it may be. But it's longer than 24 hours, then I'm going to need to slightly gear up, just give it a little rub up, and then we'll give it a good clear over with a little bit of acetone and a rag beforehand. If it's left for a few hours, as long as it's still tacky, then you can go straight on, you still get a chemical bond over that surface. Just give that little rub over, this will evaporate in seconds, and it will make that resin slightly tacky again, ready for keying on to the next day or a couple of days down the line. So, so the coverage rail, which is very important, especially when you use the laminate, this is your main waterproof layer. Now, for the two kilos of resin, we're looking at the trip and roll full like so that, and we're going to put kilo on the deck and then a kilo on the top as well. So it's always ready, mat ready as we said earlier on. So dip your roll full over that one square meter, we're going to put it in the middle and we're just going to go one roll up and down over that 50 mil. And that's all we need to do. We're going to put six of them in. So we're going to follow it through just a roll of it. 
Plenty of edging on. Two, three, and then we're going to just work it through. That way then, this six, mat six, gives you enough time, enough resin, should we say, to, to cover that area, like we've got here. And there's plenty of resin all the farming on the top of that. Just give it a good bit of And then obviously you've had your matting roll up to size. We're going to start from that drip edge. And then we're going to then just fly it on and then just roll your matting. Like so. Obviously, a larger, you've got a longer roll, we'll just continue that process. Because it will always be a two man process when we come to how to roll and laminate and just makes it a lot easier. So, same again, we're going to follow that sequence again. So six, put it on, that's one, two. Following that full matting and just work your way across like so. It's really straightforward. Any excess you've got, you cut back over what you've already done. Don't be trying to run over the top and try and put it out. That's when you're not getting lost for how much coverage you put down. You want to put six on the base, roll your matting, and then a further six roller pulls. Over the top, making sure you cover all that matting, making sure there's no damp or pale patches, making sure all that matting is completely covered. Like so. Same again, give it time to soak in. We really want to just let it soak the matting in, break that binder down, and it will make life a lot easier then for when we come to power oil. So there's the wet out done. And you follow that sequence as you go off the roof as well. So just give that a little bit of time to, to break down. And obviously then with your power roller, roughly you want to be about two metres in front, especially wetting out, and then you can just go over with your power roller. Same as we did before, nice and steady. And shove your roughly four or five passes. Now we don't want to be pressing too hard. We're just going to guide that through. Nice and steady. Get all that edges. Get it all drawn through. Four or five passes. Before we go. As long as we get that ready up on the get that stopped in the line. And you can start to see the fire that disappear. You can start to see the writing underneath. It all nice and transparent, and then you end up with a fully sealed or fully parallel. Yeah. Obviously, the six of the grand matching requires more light, more water, resin for the lamps, and then that two kilo of resin for the work. You are completely parallel now, we're getting to that point. And then we're going to move on to the next part. Obviously, if you can reach in, you can get to it. We mentioned before, we're going to cut that a little slightly back. And all we're going to do is just feather that edge in, just so you don't see that straight edge. It blends in a lot neater and better, etc. Dress off any overlaps and splashes you may have. So I'm going to top coat. And I'll quickly go through the top coat for you, this little part here now. The top coat comes in various sizes. You've got obviously 5, 10, and 20 kg cans. Take away a couple of little threads here. If you catch the, the top coat in the same day, then we can just laminate straight over the top. That's it's tacky. We have to leave it over that 24 hour product period. Then what we will do then is literally sand it down, as we did earlier on, sand it down, clean it with acetone, making sure it's prepped. It's always good to sand down and clean, just to get rid of any lumps and bumps before your final application of top coat. Obviously check before this stage, make sure there's no pinholes, make sure there's nowhere to use where you need to, because obviously if you put the top coat down, you will need to then go back over. You need to sand that down, should we say, and then go back over it with more top coat repair any area. So do all your prayer work beforehand. Now this is using the graphite prayer, which is the standard colour. You have also got the pre mixed colours. So we'll just pour the top row into the bucket. Now, the top row is a lot thin. That only comes at 0.4 kilos per square meter. So you get a really good 
probably through the top go. It's not like the red one, we're building it up. This is a nice thin coat, and it's only one coat as well. Try and stress. Obviously, the bucket's got the guidance on it through your top coat. And then we'll just follow suit as we spoke about earlier on. Give it plenty in, give it a good mix up. And then we can start to roll and apply it on. Now it's a lot easier to do all your edge work first. So go around, do all your edge detail. Go in, get all your trims done, and then work on to your main body of the roof. But I'll just show you now that the finishes you can achieve as well with the top coat, especially for balconies and walkways. If you want to get an anti slip on, if you can, you get a nice finish as well. So obviously, with your, your top coat, the roll of foam, we're just going to apply over all the trims. Etc. Nice and easy. Working it through onto that trim work all around the trims. Now, if you are putting anti slip off, then I would do my trims first. So I'll get all my trim work done and then I'll probably leave it like we've got there now. We've got all the edge of the trim and I'm onto the depth of 100 mil and I'd leave it like that once that's cured. And I put masking tape up around them areas and I can apply the top coat in with the anti slip on as well. Once you peel the masking tape off, then you're going to be left with some nice straight lines where you've got the non slip on as well. But if not, you can just cut the roof, so just cut the whole roof over. And as you go in, what we want to do with the slate granules is literally just sprinkle them in and you get them in 25 kilogram bags of slate granules. I've just got so far with it. Now with your slate granules, just grab yourself a handful and sprinkle as much or as little as you want on that roof over that area and you just wet out. So working in one meter section, just cut your roof, sprinkle it on. Now with your roller, you don't need any extra resin at all on your roller. And all I'm going to do is just work them slate granules in, smudging them, working them across in that grey top coat or whatever colour you've got at the time. And what that does is just gives you that nice key on your foot, you get that nice non-slip finish as well. So that's obviously good for the key, especially with walkways, etc. That also as well is good for tiling on. So if you do want a tile on the roof, which we do get quite a few inquiries about tiling and putting additional coverings on the roof, I would put it to this stage, get it all nice and coated. And you want to put a nice flexible non cement based tile adhesive on that. Grout it on, bed your tiles on, and then you're good to go. So that's a tile adhesive, and obviously, you've got then the option of putting your timber battens on once it's top coated. You can put your composite decking on, which is really popular now, any decking boards you want, and then your pedestals for screwing and fixing your balustrades. That's it, really. I think we've covered most of it. We go over that time, then obviously the C2 corner, which one of the customers suggested, and obviously thanks to someone who suggested balconies and walkways for today's topic. Has anybody got any questions at all? Before we do, I will obviously just explain the top coat, the, the guarantees as well. Now, with the top coat being your final product, you do get the guarantees located on the can of the top coat. What you get is a materials guarantee. Now, that's a contract between us and you, the purchaser. When you purchase the materials, that's from us. That Security, and we obviously give you that guarantee for the materials. So, tested, certified, got local flexibility control, and ETA approval for our systems as well. So, we honour that. So, if the roof has failed due to defective materials, then just speak to us and we will reimburse you like for like on that as well. And obviously, in that, there is a workmanship guarantee for yourselves, the installers, to fill in. And that's for you to fill in, put your details of the roof, what you've done, etc. And that covers your work as well. So you'll obviously give that to the homeowner, the customer, and you'll just fill in. And that's a little bit of peace of mind for them. Like you follow our guide, follow our details on that workmanship guarantee as well. Let's say these are on the top coat, fill them in, give them to your customers, and you get that 20 year materials guarantee. And then obviously yourself as installers can offer that 20 year backing if you wish to as well on the material, on the workmanship. If you do run out of any of these, then speak to your stockists or give us a really a technical and we'll gladly send some over to you. But what we need to is just a proof of purchase before we send any out in the post here. But the as I say, they are located on the cans on the top coat as well. Well, thanks for tuning in. 
obviously all the live masterclasses are available now on our YouTube channel, so log on onto the YouTube curate there and see all the different um, technical masterclasses we have been running and what we've been doing. And if any of you got any suggestions, anything you wanted to, to focus on, then please send it over via email and we'll gladly get that up and running for you. Well, thanks again, thanks for tuning in.